Hello and welcome to the brewery. Uh, I'm going to start a new project. Uh, today I'm going to build a keg washer. Now up to now when I uh, clean kegs I just fill them up with warm water and a scoop of OxyClean, let them sit for a day or two, shake them up a little, wash them out, rinse them out, and then star sand them for the next time. Uh, that works great, nothing wrong with that. Uh, my biggest problem with that though is getting inside if I need to scrub them. Uh, my arm uh, doesn't really fit down the hole of the corny keg very well and I'm always afraid that my arm's going to get stuck and I'll never get it out. So uh, anyway, it's a little scary. So, But I want to do this to not do that. But the way it's going to work is there's going to be a post, a pole that goes down in this thing and cleans it out. So anyway, let me show you what's going on here. Now the heart of the system is a pump. Now you need a pump that is able to force enough water at enough pressure to scrub the insides of the keg clean. Now not only will this be good for kegs, but it's also going to be good for carboys. And who knows, I might just use it for something else. Maybe I'll make a bottle washer at some point. But right now I'm going to work about the keg washer. What I got here is a quarter inch submersible utility pump. And here it is outside of the box. Uh, I've had this for a couple months, bought it at Menards, I think I paid about 50 bucks for it. Uh, it's a great pump. When I bought it, uh, I had water in my basement last fall and last winter for the first time in 15-20 years. And uh, in order to get the water out, until I had waterproofers come and put drain tile and a new sump in my basement, uh, I used a combination of this utility pump and some shop vacs and some Amazon timers and pumps out of the shop vacs. I'll tell you, it was really a nightmare for well over a month because they couldn't get me on the schedule to get my basement waterproof for six weeks. Anyway, but it's all done, all good now, everything's great. But this pump has a little adapter on here, which I use extensively, um, that adapts it from the threads in the pump to a garden hose. Uh, works great. You can put a hose on it, it'll pump it wherever you want to put the hose. Um, I'm not going to use that for this though. I am going to hang on to it for a further project. If I do want to make a bottle washer, uh, that hose will be good for the bottle washer. What I am going to use is the threads on the pump itself. Now these are standard one and a quarter inch pipe threads. So all I need is an adapter to adapt from standard pipe threads to anything else so that I can make a post that sticks up that I can drill holes in and it'll essentially be a sprinkler for the inside of my kegs or carboys or whatever I want to stick over the top of it. So I'm going to slide this over to the side and I'll show you some of the stuff I got here. Now I got it down here in the ground here. Uh, okay. Um, now this is all going to sit on top of a five gallon bucket, six gallon bucket, whatever I can put it in. And I'll just fill the bucket up with uh, cleaner, uh, dishwasher soap, OxyClean, whatever I decide to put in it, put the pump in the bottom and it'll just recirculate that water into the keg and out. So I've got this adapter bushing that adapts from a four inch uh, pipe to a three inch pipe. And there's going to be a hole drilled in the lid for the bucket that this is going to sit down in. And the keg is going to go over the post sticking out and sit on top of this. That four inches fits really nice on the corny opening. And uh, it's just going to keep shooting water up. And the water is going to drain right back down into the bucket. So anyway, that's one of the pieces. Um... To adapt the threads on here to a one inch PVC pipe, I have this adapter here that goes from one and a quarter inch pipe threads to one inch PVC, and it's going to sit right on top of there. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to convert this one inch PVC hole to a smaller diameter, so I've got a uh, one and a quarter inch to three quarter inch bushing adapter. Um, bushing adapter, they both can be used interchangeably for this. But it goes in here, and I've got three quarter inch PVC hole there. Oh, that's one thing I don't, excuse me, that's one thing I don't have right here is the PVC pipe. It's 10 foot pipe lengths, and uh, it's sitting on the other side of the 
workshop here. Um, I'll cut it to length and you'll see that later. Okay, so this goes from the one inch hole on this pipe thread adapter to the bushing to a three quarter inch uh, pipe or pipe hole, uh, unthreaded. And what I'm gonna do is I'll put a, a one inch, uh, three quarter inch piece of pipe there that will connect that to another three quarter inch pipe adapter bushing that will reduce that down to my one inch T, X, T. And that'll go in the bottom of that. And the little one inch nipple of pipe is gonna connect those two parts together. And that's gonna be the heart of the system. Um, on this T here, or X, I'm gonna call it a T, um, it's got three outputs now. One output's gonna go straight up to the pipe that I'm going to drill some holes in and the other two outputs go from a uh, one inch uh, outside diameter to half inch threads. So these bushings are going to go on both sides of it, half inch threads, one inch diameter uh, adapter in that T. And within each of those threads, I'm going to put this half inch threaded barbed hosing adapter and uh, I'll have one of those on either side of the T oops the wrong one on there and now what those are going to be used for is uh, I'm going to have this 5 16 in hose now these are um, half inch threaded to 3 8 inch barbed and I've got 5 16 inch hose that I'm going to thread onto those barbs and hold in place with some hose clamps. And on the other end of those hoses, there'll be two of them, are going to be uh, threaded uh, adapters for threaded uh, connectors for my keg. Uh, be them ball lock or pin lock. I typically use pin lock adapters, but they're always threaded. So I can swap back and forth just by unscrewing the, adapt the connector onto this. So again, uh, 3 8 to half inch threads, uh, 5 16 inch tubes, uh, and uh, standard 5 16 inch threaded barbed adapter for your uh, beverage and gas connectors. Finally, on the top of this, this uh, last hole is going to be a 1 inch to three quarter inch pipe thread adapter. And that is essentially the basic heart of the system all put together. Now coming out of the top of this, I'm gonna create two different pipes uh, sticking up. A shorter one that's probably gonna be, I don't know, maybe 12, 18 inches. And that'll be for two and a half inch, or excuse me, two and a half, three gallon kegs or uh, carboys. And since it's half inch, it should go into the carboy's uh, uh, spout. Uh, I have read that sometimes that the half inch pipe for PVC is a little too big for the hole and it doesn't allow the water to drain out of it fast enough. Uh, we'll see about that. If that's the case, then I'll make one out of copper, which I guess is uh, narrower in diameter and works better. But again, three quarter inch threads here. Um, I'll make one pipe with half inch PVC and I've got another three quarter inch threaded adapter here that's for three quarter inch pipes. On the other inch, end of these pipes, I've got caps and the cap will be up in the top here. For the five gallon kegs, I'll probably make that maybe close to two feet tall. I haven't, oops, I haven't actually me measured it, but uh, I will do that as part of the process. So really, that's the heart of the system. Right now, I'm going to get to putting everything together, and I'll stop back. Now, I don't remember if I mentioned it. I will put a parts list on the comments of the YouTube video, um, underneath the video. Um, if you like it, subscribe to my channel, please. Uh, but uh, I will also put pricing and about how much I paid for everything. Again, I bought stuff at Menards, I bought stuff at Home Depot, I bought stuff at my home brew store. Um, most of the stuff I got at Menards, I did get this one and a quarter inch 
to uh, one inch adapter here at the Home Depot. Uh, they didn't have that at Menards. I didn't uh, swing by Lowe's to see if Lowe's had it. Really, my go-to store for home improvement stuff is Menards. Uh, I think Home Depot and Lowe's are a little more expensive for most things. Um, but anyway, I'll come back and uh, show you what's going on. Thank you. I'm back. Well, it's actually the next day. I got sidetracked and wasn't able to finish up my build yesterday. So I'm continuing it now. Um, so I got to thinking, I will show you a little bit about how to put this together. I wasn't planning on it. If you've used PVC and PVC pipe, this is something you've already done. You can skip forward a little bit. But let me explain what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do a few of them. Uh, when you glue PVC together, you have to have two different things. You have to have a cleaner primer, and then you have to have the glue. Now, to make the PVC uh, connection, <clears throat> you take the primer... And this is called purple primer. I think there's a brown primer for CPVC and PVC or yellow. I'm not sure exactly what color. Anyway, and you run the primer around the inside of the female connector and the outside of the male connector. And what this does is this prepares the PVC to accept the glue. Now I'm going to let that dry a little bit. It doesn't really need to dry all the way, but I'm letting it dry. Then you do the same thing with the PVC cement. Run the PVC cement around this. And then I'm going to run it around here. Now what this does, is it pretty much softens up the PVC so it'll go in easier. And you push it in, and turn it a little if you can. Oh, shoot, I can't turn it. Typically if you're putting a pipe in, you push it in and you turn it a quarter turn. Uh, this isn't going to turn. It's going to be fine though. And that's all it takes. These things will never, ever, ever come apart. Um do the same thing with the T here. I will go ahead, I'll just go ahead and clean all four of the connections. Now you see I'm doing this over a mat, which is actually a piece of carpet tile turned upside down. Um, let that go. Now in this one, Remember, I've got uh, two half-inch uh, threaded connectors. Oh, two, I guess i got to clean them, too. And uh, one three-quarter-inch threaded connector and a three-quarter-inch female pipe fitting. So I'm going to just got to remember when I put this together, I orient them right. The half-inch connectors go opposite each other. Those will be for the uh, barb connectors for the hose. Uh, the three-quarter inch connector uh, goes on the top with threads and three-quarter inch connector on the bottom for pipe. So, that's that. I'll just do the same thing. Let's do the same thing with the glue. And I am going to do these one at a time. Oh, crap. I left the barcode on this one. I think I better take that off. Shit. I bet I left the barcode in all of them. For this, it's not going to make a huge difference, really. I mean, it's going to be in a bucket enclosed. I'm not too worried about it leaking. But uh, I better check the other ones to make sure. Done. The other side is threaded. Let me double check to make sure there's no barcode in that. There isn't. Now again, I want the half inch threads opposite each other. I'm going to double check that. That looks good. I'm not a plumber, so if any of you are plumbers and I'm doing this wrong, please don't correct me. It'll work.
Okay, now on this side, I'm going to go three-quarter inch thread on one side, three-quarter inch female on the other. Okay. Pretty hard to screw that up since they're the only two left. And I was able to turn that a little, so that's good. I'm probably putting a boatload of glue on here that I don't really need, but that's all right. All right, T's done. This is done. Next thing I have to do is the pipe, and uh, I'm going to make two of them again, a half inch one and a three quarter inch one. Um, I'll go ahead and do that and come back. All right, the pipes are cut. I've got uh, three pipes here. I got the three quarter inch sprinkler, the half inch sprinkler head, and this is the connector between the threaded piece and the uh, four way connector there. Now I cut this one attention intentionally a little bit long. Um, I know there's about a one inch depth in the hole here on both sides. Um, I'm going to cut this end off a little bit once I get the other end in. So, um, again, I've got the purple primer and the PVC glue. Um, I did actually read the instructions in the past couple minutes. And it does say that you're supposed to uh, coat the fitting, coat the pipe, make sure you cover all the areas. And then go back and coat the fitting again. Now it also says you don't need to wait for it to dry. Um, it says then you go and you put a thin layer of glue on the fitting, a thin layer of glue in the pipe, and then do it again. So once I've done that, I'm going to push it in. We're going. and it won't twist so now that ends in and it is bottom out here um, I think I'm going to clean out I got a little excess glue and no, it even actually has some plastic pieces that were uh, I don't know dissolved I guess um, anyway that's good to go now I want to do this end here but I'm not sure the length so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bottom it out here oh, that's probably yeah, we'll see. See now, okay, if I push that in about an inch where it's going to bottom out, I got a lot of excess. And I don't really want that much excess because it's going to be sticking out of the uh, top of my bucket. So I really only want maybe a quarter inch. And I can kind of hard to see. A quarter inch at the bottom there, uh, which means I'm going to have to cut off a bunch. So let's see. I'm just going to eyeball it. And as it turns out, there's some writing on here. And with the writing, I can kind of get a good idea where I need to cut it. I've got a tubing cutter here in my uh, tool arsenal. And I'm going to use it. That's the ratcheting tubing cutter you use for irrigation pipe, PVC. Uh, the blade on it is kind of old. It's not super sharp, so i got to kind of help it along. But it cuts a nice flush uh, end on there. Okay, same thing I did before. Prime it. On the right side, prime it. Prime it. Blue. So, blue. That says a thin coating. Um, So that's what I'm going to do is a thin coating. And then same thing, it's thin. And I was able to twist a little in this. And we are good. All right. So there's the base of the pump. And let's just see what it looks like. 
we run here. Now one thing you got to notice and realize is the uh, purple primer stuff never goes away. Um, it's always going to be there. But there you go. This looks like it's going to work pretty good. Threads on real nice. Oh, this thing's still twisting. So that glue's not dry yet. I always thought PVC glue dried really fast, but apparently not. Okay, now I did that so that it's going to be uh, threaded in there real nice. The pipes come up. Now, again, I'll hook up these. Uh, I'm going to hook up my barb fittings just to see how it looks. And they're half inch to three eighths, of course. It should be pretty good. All right, well, that's the heart of it. There we go. Now it's just a matter of putting this on. All right, so in this case, and I want that on there so I can get a, I can eyeball the length of this too. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the three quarter inch fitting on. And this stuff gets all over the place. Now I found out that this, uh, the primer itself is made of acetone primarily, so that's kind of why it eats into the plastic as well as it does to prime it. Bam. Okay, that's good. Um, now let's see what it looks like here. Now here's where I'm going to do a little bit of dry fitting as far as the keg goes. Um, I'm going to screw this in just to see how far it really goes. And it doesn't have to go far. Um, one thing you got to remember, this is going to be in a bucket. This is a submersible pump. If it leaks a little, it's no big deal. All right, where's my bucket? Um, oh, here it is, underneath. Get this out of the way. Bucket. Now you see the fitting does stick out of the top a bit. Now, of course, on the top, I'm going to have this adapter here, so the keg's going to sit up uh, probably up to here. That's where the keg's going to end up being. So, I'm going to just kind of figure, here's the bottom of my keg. That's going to be up there. So, actually, I think the leg of that is going to be pretty good. So, I'm going to leave it as is. So, let's take this out. Through this I gotta be careful I guess I don't want any glue on these threads or I'll never be able to unthread it um, so that's good now I just need to put the cap on same process you've seen it before sorry if this bores you um, it's just what it takes, but in reality, though, this is not taking very long to do this. And the next step is going to be um, drilling holes in the pipe for the water to come out. Now, I've uh, I kind of created myself a little spreadsheet that will that I can use. Um, knowing that this is three quarter inch all the way and that I'm going to have three quarters inches of water going through it, I kind of made a little um, spreadsheet telling me how many holes I could drill of what size diameter holes and still get decent flow out of here and keep it underneath it so the pressure's up. Now this thing does push out a lot of pressure. That's not going to be a huge issue. 
But what I think I'm going to do is on the top here, I'm going to drill maybe six or eight uh, eighth inch holes, uh, maybe slightly larger, all the way around the sides and the top, pointing in all directions. And then I'm going to go down and at 90 degrees, put like five holes uh, on the sides of the pipe going up and down. And then I'm going to put a, four holes to where they're going to angle down so that uh, they'll shoot what is actually the underside of the top of the keg when it's upside down. So I'm going to have sprays going outward, sprays going upward, and a couple sprays going downward. So hopefully it'll get everything and the water will flow all over the inside. Anyway, so the next thing I'm going to do is drill some holes and uh, I'll get back to that. Now, oh, before I forget, when I'm going to drill these holes, um, it's pretty hard to drill into PVC without the bit walking. So I'm going to try something and see if it works. What I'm going to take is a soldering iron with a pinpoint tip on it, heat that up, and see if I can uh, put some dots in here uh, to essentially, um, I don't know, center punch the holes I'm going to drill. So that should work pretty good. I can't imagine it wouldn't. But uh, I'll be back and we'll see. All right. Well, I have uh, measured out where I'm going to put the holes. I uh, took my ruler and uh, identified what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here and show you. Okay, we uh, I've got markings on the sides here. And let's see if I can get over here. And I've actually started uh, with my soldering iron poking some holes in it. Um, I'll go ahead and poke some holes in the side here. Out. And hang on a second. All right, well, I've got the holes marked here next to my pencil lines. I'm just going to put a dot. And that dot is going to be where I'm going to put my drill bit. Now, again, on this bottom one here, I'm going to angle the drill down a little bit so it gets to the top of the inside of the keg. Let's push this over again. And not a big deal. Just a little bit of a dot there. Again, that'll help me center my drill better so it's not going to walk all over the PVC. I don't know. Never done that before, but I think it's a good idea. And I got now I'm going to use a smaller drill on the side than I'm going to use on the top. And the water is going to waterfall down the side of the keg. Looks like I missed one on the side over here. I'm just... And... One last side. Actually, I already did that side. All right, that's that. Now I'm going to start drilling. Well, I went through my spreadsheet and figured out how much area I have in a three-quarter inch hole, which is the internal di diameter of the pipe, and um, how that relates to how many holes I can drill based on how much water can flow through that pipe. Now I'm going to use 560 or 532nd inch drill bits and a 964 or excuse me 1 8 inch drill bit and based on that I can I'm going to drill 9 uh 532nd inch holes, 5 in the top, 4 around the edges and 16 of the 8th inch holes. So anyway, I'm going to get started here. And since I've already got my hole marked should be pretty easy to do this. You know, I'm going to go a little bit to the side here on the just a slight angle. This isn't rocket science. So 
going to go maybe about, I don't know, 22 degrees. There's 45, there's 22. Okay, those are the top holes. Now I'm going to put this back on the side. And I'm going to drill the side holes. I'm going to drill these straight out. Now I can always go back if I don't like the way that these orient and twist them sideways. Oops, lost my bit. <clears throat> okay, so there's the cap drilled. Now I'm going to change my bit and start drilling the sides. I will probably go ahead and speed this up in the actual video so you don't have to watch it. So I'm not going to talk much here. Although maybe I don't need to speed it up. Again, on the bottom one, I did want to angle it down so it'll get the top of the keg. As projects go, this is actually a fairly straightforward one. So, yeah, almost done here. As you can tell, PVC. Whoa. Lost it again. That's kind of weird. I thought I locked it in real good. <laughs> Four more. Marking the holes with that soldering iron has turned out to be a pretty good idea. And that's it. Holes drilled, everything good. I'm going to clean it up. And uh, holes are all drilled. Going to clean it up. And we'll try it out. The next step is the project is going to be connecting up the hoses to the barbed uh, 90 degree half inch uh, fittings. Now I have uh, 5 16 inch, ho uh, 5 16 inch hose here and 3 8 inch barbs. Um, the 3 8 inch barbs are a little tighter than the hose so in order for me to get the hoses over those barbs I'm going to need to heat them up a little bit so they stretch. Now back here I've had some water boiling and I'm just going to put the hose in the boiling water here which is now just really warm. That should soften it enough so it'll go right over the barb. And sure enough that's exactly what it did. Now these hoses are about, um, I'm going to twist it so the curl is to the outside a little bit. Um, uh, these hoses are about two feet long. I kind of guesstimated. I think that's going to be enough. So we're going to do it to the other one. Give about 10 seconds in the water to soften it up. Doesn't take too much. And this one, I think I'll make sure I get it that way to begin with. And boom. Right on. Okay, so now I got the hoses there. I do have hose clamps. I'll just slide them over and tighten them up. And um, do the same thing to the other end. Now the other end, I don't think I really will need to heat it up too much, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. I'll go ahead and slide the hose clamps on. Um, the other end is going to have the um, swivel fittings on them. And it's a two-part fitting. It's got the barb. It goes inside the nut and 
what I'm going to do to make it easier to put them on, I'm going to go ahead and slide them on one of my connectors here. That holds the bar out. And I guess I'll slide the other one on the other connector for when I'm ready to do that one. And let's go ahead and heat these up. I just threw off the hose clamps on one on the other hose, but wow, that went right on. Okay, so let me look around for them real quick. All right, I found the clamps. Put them on the hose. This time I'll be a little more careful. Okay. And doesn't take much on these. Now these are actually 5 16 inch hose fittings. So that's why that one went on a lot easier. So now I'm just going to tighten them up and uh, we'll move a little further on. Now when you tighten the hose clamp on a barb, try and do it in kind of the middle of the barb. And you want to tighten them snug. In this case, it doesn't have to be super, super tight because, for one thing, it's going to be underwater anyway. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about a lot of pressure being let off from them. But I don't want them to come off. And uh, I'll come back to this. Okay, both those clamps on, ready to go. Next step in the process is uh, building the lid that this thing's going to fit in. And I have a lid right here. Now it's going to involve just drilling a couple holes in it. Well, four holes in it. I'm going to drill uh, one big hole in the center for this. And then I'm going to drill uh, small holes in the side. Uh, one will be for the cord from the pump to come out so I can plug it in and then two of them will be for the tubings to come out. Uh, anyway, I'll go to that right now. Now I know the cord hole is going to be pretty large so I have a step bit that I'm going to use for both of these processes. And the cord is going to use one of my bigger step bits. Now I got these at Harbor Freight. Uh, the bigger ones are 13 bucks before the 20% discount coupon you can get anytime you want online um, or in any of the flyers that you get constantly in the mail or in your newspaper. Now I, the biggest one is going to be big enough for my uh, cord. Uh, what I'll do is I'll get down to the second of the biggest one and then I'll run the cord through and see if it fits. I'm going to do something a little different this time and I'm going to drill over a container so I don't have to do a whole lot of cleanup. Well, there you have it. Man, that was quick. Um, Quart. That was the second to the biggest one. Cord goes through just right. Okay, now an op. Uh, next hole I'm going to do is the hole in the middle, the big one. And I happen to have a hole saw that has a blade just for it, um, and it's going to be just the perfect size for it. So let me put that together real quick. Okay, one hole saw.
Now this ought to go through it pretty quick too. Now, now the way this lid is, there just happens to be a divot, a dimple right in the middle. So I'm just going to use that. And it came off my hook, I think. Always something. There's a cleaner way to do this. I'm just going to go real slow. <clears throat> well, one hole. And one hole bit. Alright, the next step is going to be... Uh, Drilling the holes for the hoses to come out, and I'm going to drill those at opposite ends over here. Uh, and I'm going to clean up a little bit first. Be right back. Now that I've got the big hole drilled and the cord hole drilled, I'm going to build drill the holes for the uh, hoses. And I've looked at my step bit and compared it to the size of the hose clamps and the uh, fittings on the end, and I gotta go all the way down. So. One side, I'm gonna clean up the burr, and I'm gonna do the other side. Again, I gotta all the way, go all the way down. There you have it. We're ready to go. Next thing is going to be putting this thing on. Now before I do that, I'm going to take the hose clamps off it. Uh, this time I'm going to use my drill to do that. I don't like tightening up hose clamps with the drill because you never know if you might get carried away and uh, break them. But I don't like taking them off. Don't need this hose clamp anymore. I'll put that in the parts bin. This should just go right in here. It'll be pretty darn close. Cut that out. So let me get my bucket and let's see how this thing works. Okay. All right, here's the bucket. Here's the top. Here's the bump. Uh, somewhere over here I've got my long hose. I got the short one here. I did go ahead and build that uh, with the camera off. Um, let me go find the other hose. I'll be right back. Make sure. Other pipe. <laughs> Oh, duh. Okay. All right, I forgot. I had put this inside the uh, keg. So now let's screw this on. Okay. Now I do have another one of these uh, one and a half inch pipe fitting things. And I think I might... I might just uh, create one with just the pipe coming off it, since I don't need all these hoses all the time. Yeah, I want the hose just to be 90. Okay, that's that. Let's put this in here. And I'm going to put this on top. Cord through the big hole gonna have to take the connectors off of the other one. Let me reorient the camera a little bit. Now I'm gonna have to take the connectors off of this and it really doesn't matter which connector goes onto which hose. Put 
stock. Other than you want the connector on the side that you're pulling out of. Now one thing about these connectors This is a really tight lid. And we are set. Now one thing, even if I'm not using the keg washer as a keg washer, um, I want to put these ends on, otherwise I'd be shooting water out of them. And there we go. Let's test with the keg. You know, first thing I'll do is put the hoses on. Looks like I kind of have them on the opposite sides. That's all right. I'm just going like this. Go right over the top. Okay, looks like I'm going to have to shove these down in the hole. Might have to redesign some there. Not the end of the world. Yeah, looks like I'm going to have to do a little bit of design work here to get those to fit right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut some bigger slots in the top for the uh, the liquid connector and the gas connector to go down. Holes aren't gonna cut it, so I have to go back to the drawing board a little bit on that. Yeah, that's not too bad, but yeah, they're definitely gonna have to go inside the bucket. I'm going to have to make some changes there. Not a big deal. I think what I'll do bring the camera over. If you look, those rest on top. Now, if I have some stubby ones, which I may have, um, I can use it. Otherwise, if I just cut a slot here for these to go down instead of a hole, I think that would work too. Uh, all right. Well, I'll work on that uh, and we'll come back. Well, I got it figured out. Um, still using the same connectors here. What I did is I made some bigger holes. Took the hole saw again and widened those out. So we'll come and get a little closer look here. See, I got the holes there. A lot bigger. All over here. We'll, uh, take a look and uh, now one thing I did realize is that you got to make sure you orient your connectors to the right hole so that the hoses go down and so this one is going into my uh, beverage connector uh, or excuse me gas connector this one's going into the beverage so I just lift it up and over like this and feed the hoses down the holes as I'm putting it on and it's done. Let's get a little closer and I'll get a little look at it. Okay, let's just spin it around. See, you got the beverage going in there. I believe that's above. And the gas going in over here. Let's see if we get there. Now I'm seeing that that hose is a little bit crimped. So I'm going to have to turn that connector around. But you get the gist of it. Um, next thing we're going to do is test it.
So I filled it up. I filled it up with a couple gallons of water and everything. Let me see if I can put on the hole there. Okay, you see in there, there's a bunch of water. Uh, I'm going to turn it on. All right, I got a plastic carboy here. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. You can see that water is going everywhere. I'm going to try with the glass car, boy. Okay, I uh, tried the uh, carboy, but uh, it was too big. So I swapped out the uh, big long hose for the short hose to see how that worked, and that worked pretty good. That's what's on there now. And uh, I tried something different. Let's see if I get around here. I put some OxyClean in. And you can see it's really sudsing up a lot. I don't know how much longer that's going to be able to take it. Uh, I have read people say that they use just regular old dishwasher detergent because that's low suds. Probably a good idea. Seems to be working okay though. Well, there it is, a keg washer. Uh, not sure what more I can add to it at this point. Um, I think I mentioned before the half inch um, pipe didn't fit in the carboy hole, so I, that was a bust. Um, it actually fit in, but when I turned the uh, pump on, it filled up the carboy with the water, and nothing would drain out the bottom. So I'm going to have to do something different there. Uh, I'll probably just uh, create a straight uh, pipe. To the adapter at the bottom fitting for getting the uh, the hose connectors. I mean that can't cost me much more than a couple bucks. Um, I think I may create some different size ones of these, maybe shorter and longer. Um, again, the ends cost me maybe I don't know 69 cents or 49 cents for the cap, and maybe a buck for the threaded uh, threaded connector. Uh, I still got probably eight feet of three-quarter inch pipe and another eight or nine feet a half inch pipe So I could go to town with a lot of different things if I want uh, Next thing I may try making is a bottle washer. Um, I have seen some things online about that This pump definitely has enough output to do something uh, I've heard people that make a grid out of uh, PVC and then drill little holes in the grid and put uh, sprinkler heading, uh, the sprinkler drip heads that spray out. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work. I'll have to do some research on that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, if I even get around to doing it. It would be handy, though, when I do bottle. It's nice to not have to wash every bottle one at a time. Well, let's see. I'm not sure that's about it. So, anyway, you guys have a great day. Enjoy your beers. Uh, make some great beers. And uh, to everybody, no beer, but cheers.